Before we start today's show, make sure you subscribe to us here on Philadelphia Eagles now for the best Eagles offseason coverage. We're talking NFL free agency buzz, NFL draft prospect analysis, which is what we're doing on this morning's show. And when breaking news happens, especially next week when NFL free agency gets underway, you can expect us to go deeper than any other Eagles YouTube channel out there and get these shows out fast as possible. So subscribe, lock us in, and let's start today's show. All right, let's get it. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Chase Sr. Appreciate all of you for rocking with us. On today's show, going to take a look at Todd McShay's latest NFL mock draft to see who he has the Eagles selecting at number 10 overall and at number 30. But there are some trades we want to get to, which really sets the stage for this first round. And it follows a lot of the buzz that we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks about the Chicago Bears fielding calls for the number one overall pick. And in this instance, the Bears have this trade with Shane Steichen and the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts looking for a quarterback. They move up to number one. Bears received number four overall and 35 overall, as well as a later round pick and a 2024 first rounder. And then the Las Vegas Raiders, also in search of a quarterback under Josh McDaniels, heading into year two under that current regime. They move up to number four, and the Bears get back number seven overall, a 2023 third round pick, and a 2024 third round pick as well. So with that, let's take a look at who McShay has going to these respective teams and then who the Eagles draft at number 10. Bryce Young, number one overall to the Colts. C.J. Stroud to the Houston Texans at number two. So two quarterbacks go back to back. Will Anderson at number three to the Arizona Cardinals and Jonathan Gannon. Anthony Richardson to the Las Vegas Raiders at number four. And then it goes Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech to Seattle. Christian Gal Gonzalez at number six to Detroit. Peter Skaronsky, the offensive tackle and guard to the Bears at number seven as they need offensive line help. And the stud, Nolan Smith, who a lot of people expected a couple of weeks ago prior to the NFL Combine to be a late first round pick, but because he was so stellar in Indianapolis for the Combine, he goes top 10 here, according to McShay. Now it's the Philadelphia Eagles, almost on the clock. Will Levis to the Panthers at number nine to team up with Frank Wright. And the Birds drafting the star studded running back out of Texas in B. John Robinson. Paris Johnson at number 11 to the Titans. And Jalen Carter, another Georgia Bulldog, number 12 to the Houston Texans. So, with the Eagles taking B. John Robinson, a running back here at number 10, it really goes against the grain with how the Eagles run their organization and their draft operations. What would your one word reaction be if the Eagles? do take Bijan Robinson at number 10. Let me know. Shocking is a word that would certainly fit. But it's also intriguing and fascinating for a couple of reasons because Bijan Robinson, you can make the argument, he's the best all-around football player in this 2023 NFL draft class. An immediate plug-and-play starter from day one who would fit tremendously in this Eagles offense. We saw at the NFL scouting combine, and in three years at Texas, he's a fluid route runner at that running back position, but also a tremendous ball carrier. His display at the NFL Combine, did you see him running routes, catching footballs, and running on the field at Lucas Oil? Smooth, pretty, in and out of his cuts. This guy is certainly one of one. Elite level college production at Texas. Another reason why the Eagles could entertain him at number 10. And he would be a tremendous, great scheme fit alongside Jalen Hurts, running a lot of the RPO and could elevate this offense from day one. A couple of thoughts on Bijan going to the birds at number 10. The draft slot here, he would have a cap hit of $4 million in 2023. If he has production with the Eagles like he had the last two years at Texas, that's great bang for your buck. And that would be much cheaper than Miles Sanders, who could get, let's say, between 6 to $10 million in NFL free agency. And think about this. I'm not a proponent of taking a running back at number 10. But if you get the next version of Christian McCaffrey, which is my player comp for B. John Robinson because of his ball-carrying ability and pass-catching ability for the next four to five years, 
Is it worth it? He'd be under that rookie contract and under team control for the next four to five years, and that fits the win-now Super Bowl window for the Philadelphia Eagles. With him as a player, he can run inside in between the tackles, but also outside because he has that elusive speed to get out to the perimeter. He has the breakaway speed. He can make guys miss in the open field at all three levels, along the defensive line, linebacking core, and in that secondary, and he can also catch the ball out of the backfield and out of the slot. B. John Robinson would be a perfect scheme fit alongside Jalen Hurts, which would cause defenses to have nightmares and a lot of fits. You put B. John Robinson on this offense with Jalen Hurts, if he takes yet another leap as a passer with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, and what was the best offensive line in football last year, he realistically, in my opinion, could have about 2,000 all-purpose yards in year one. He's a plug-and-play guy from day one, from the jump, as I said. You look at his production the previous two years at Texas, so good. More than 1,100 rushing yards in 2021. Average yards per carry of 5.8. 26 catches for 295 yards and 15 total touchdowns. A lot of people thought that with the NFL draft on the horizon in his mind that maybe he'd sit out, maybe he wouldn't be used as much, maybe he wouldn't be better. Well, he was in 2022. Rushing yards went up by more than 400 yards. Average yards per carry, tick up. Receptions, 19, but for more receiving yards than last year with 314 and five more total touchdowns with 20. Now, the other day during one of our draft videos, we took a look at these relative athletic scores where these athletes from the combine are basically tested on a scale from zero to 10. And it's a really good barometer of the athletic profile of these draft prospects, and B. John Robinson with a good showing at the Combine had an RAS score of 9.81. That's very, very good. Now you see the yellow here. Those are kind of average scores, but it checks in with his height and his weight. 5'11", 215 pounds is plenty good for a running back in this league. His vertical and broad jump, really, really good elite in that category. This is a guy with some good size at 215 pounds who ran a 4-4 40-yard dash, pretty good 20-yard split, a very good 10-yard split. The athletic testing numbers very good for Bijan Robinson. Here's what McShay had to say about him going to the birds. He has the contact balance and burst to make defenders miss and move the chains, and I know every other NFC team would be struggling with how to stop on offense that houses Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Bijan Robinson. What do you take away there? There's no right answer. As for defense, the Eagles have another first rounder at number 30. And at that spot, I would expect the Eagles. If they do go Bijan, the sexy, really alluring pick at number 10, they would go defense at number 30. And what also makes sense as we pop up another poll question here is that Adam Schefter, and we're going to talk about this on our second show later on today on this beautiful Wednesday, he expects the Eagles to lose James Bradbury, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and Javon Hargrave in free agency. What that tells me is that maybe the Eagles are going to sacrifice the defense and rely on their offense with all of those aforementioned weapons to outscore a lot of opponents here in 2023 while still staying in that Super Bowl window. So with that, I ask you this. Should the Eagles take Bijan at number 10? P for pick. D for don't pick, let me know down below. Before we get to the Eagles pick at number 30, we have a fantastic deal we want to tell you about thanks to our friends at Fanatics. If you go to chatsports.com slash Eagles NFC, you can get this Eagles NFC champion shirt. It was $35, slashed it in half. For all of our Eagles now audience, it is now $17. So get hooked up, swagged up, and swagged out with some Eagles gear. We wish it was a Super Bowl shirt, but a banner will be raised at Lincoln Financial Field for winning the NFC. It's chatsports.com slash Eagles NFC. We'll put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. Now let's move forward with today's show and see who the Eagles select at number 30. But of course, we have to see who the players selected before that slot and the players that went off the board. Broderick Jones, another Georgia Bulldog to the Jets at 13. Quentin Johnson, the wide receiver out of TCU who's tall, 
jump ball guy, can climb the ladder and get it. He goes to the Patriots at number 14. Bill Belichick, can he finally draft a quality wide receiver? Michael Mayer, the tight end out of Notre Dame, to the Packers at 15. Devin Weatherspoon to the Washington Commanders at number 16. Really good corner out of Illinois. Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State to the Pittsburgh Steelers at 17. Lucas Van Ness, defensive lineman out of Iowa to the Lions. A guy who I love, Joey Porter Jr., falling to 19. He goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a couple of corners who are set to be free agents. Miles Murphy, the defensive lineman out of Clemson, dropping all the way to 20. Some people thought that before the combine, he'd be a top 10 guy. Could be an Eagles target at 10th overall. Jordan Addison, wide receiver, out of USC. Didn't test well at the combine, but I like his college production. To the Chargers at 21. Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State to the Ravens as maybe Lamar Jackson, if he stays there, will get a good wide out. Deontay Banks out of Maryland to Minnesota at 23. Darnell Wright, offensive tackle out of Tennessee to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then we inch closer to the Birds at 30. Zay Flowers, wide receiver out of Boston College, goes to Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and the Giants. Shout out to the Giants for paying Daniel Jones all that money. Great Great news for the Eagles. Dalton Kincaid, love him as a tight end. He goes to the Cowboys, and they could move on from Dalton Schultz. He could be their replacement. Keon White, edge rusher out of Georgia Tech to the Buffalo Bills at 27. Anton Harrison, offensive tackle out of Ohio State to the Bengals at number 28. And then you see Brian Breesey, defensive tackle out of Clemson, going all the way back to number 29. Again, some mocks a couple of weeks ago had him going to the Eagles at number 10, but because of his combine performance and I believe lack of college production, he falls to 29. Kalijah Cansey to the Eagles at number 30. Some people are saying he could be the next Aaron Donald, not just because he went to pit like Aaron Donald, but because their athletic profiles are very, very similar. So let's dive into it. Todd McShay on Cansey, who was a combine freak. Eagles general manager Howie Roseman loves building his roster up from the trenches, and after landing an impact running back in Robinson earlier in round one, he can pick up one of the biggest combine standouts right here. Cansey ran the fastest 40-yard dash for a defensive tackle at the combine since 2006, turning in a 4.67. That's freaky, folks. He's a disruptive player with explosive traits. He had 14 and a half sacks, 28 and a half tackles for loss over the past two seasons. But he's a bit of a tweener at 281 pounds, meaning he might move around Philly's defensive line with Javon Hargrave, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Robert Quinn, and Dominican Sue and Linval Joseph all entering free agency from that line. Canty's versatility would be welcomed. Now you go back to those Kalijah Cansey, Aaron Donald comparisons. This is why, in addition to some of the production at Pitt, height. Very, very similar. 6'1 for Cansey, 6 foot and 3 quarters for Aaron Donald. Weight, 281 pounds for Cansey. Aaron Donald also undersized at 285 pounds. 10 yard split, almost identical. A millisecond off. 40 yard dash, 4'6'7 for Cansey, 4'6'8 for Aaron Donald, and an athleticism score of 94 for Cansey and 98 for Aaron Donald. Can't see for a couple of reasons, because of the college production, because of the speed, even at that size, and the comparisons to Aaron Donald is a fascinating prospect. Here's what he did in 2022. He tallied seven and a half sacks. A year ago, he tallied seven, 14 and a half tackles for losses. He was disruptive at the line of scrimmage, but also active in that backfield. 30 quarterback hurries, and nine quarterback hits. This is a guy who has versatility. You can line him up all across that defensive line, and if you put him alongside Jordan Davis, you can get away with him being a little bit undersized because he can exploit some of those mismatches against slower plotting centers and guards, but also if Jordan Davis is going to be your other starting defensive tackle, he makes up for the lack of weight for Kalijah Kansi because He's a massive dude. So, our final question. Head back to school. Get those pens out. Grade McShay's mock to the Eagles. A, B, C, D, or F. Let us know down in the comment section. Subscribe and turn on your notice because later on today, we'll get to the latest Eagles free agency buzz.